fellow ink drinkers, and welcome back to the Blind Girls Book Talk podcast. My name is Aria. And I'm Belle. And we are two legally blind sisters who love reading and love books. And so what we've done is we've created this show in order to talk about that. We talk about a wide variety of bookish content, and that can range from bad retellings of stories, book to movie adaptation comparisons, buddy reads, recent reads, bookish challenges, really. The list does go on and on. And today we are going to be talking about books that made us feel something. Now, I said last time that this is going to be a- an interesting episode because Belle is notorious for not really feeling all that much when she is reading books. Same with watching movies or TV shows, though. That is very fair. Okay, so here's the thing. There's probably a lot, a lot, a lot of books that would be on my list because I feel many things, especially I love the ones where I feel the secondhand embarrassment because that is always a great time for me (laughs) is when things are going along and all of a sudden something very embarrassing happens or a character is just very bumbling and you're just like, oh gosh. Like the most recent example for me is assistant to the villain. I got to a point where like inwardly I'm just so embarrassed for the main character, for the main girl. So I'm just like, I need to walk away for just a little bit of time because I'm just embarrassed (laughs) for her. But yeah, so for me, there's a lot of the feelings for Belle. There isn't. However, you did tell me at one point in time, there was one book or a couple books, like maybe two, that you're like, I actually feel something reading this and this is a problem. There's only one book that I can think of off the top of my head that made me cry. And I think two that I can think of that just made me feel something. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel, but I feel something. Okay. And so what were those books? So a book that made me cry was I talked about this before. And I think it's the only book that has ever made me cry. And it is If Heaven Was For Real. Mm, yeah. I'm not trying to be religious or anything. I'm not pushing anything on anybody. But for me, it helped with the time that I read it. As I've explained before, I read it after our grandmother died. I was really struggling because I only knew one grandparent growing up. And that was her. And so like losing her affected me very much. She was very religious, so my mom and dad were very much struggling with what to do with me because I was a wreck on top of dealing with Aria stuff that she had going on. It was a big mess for her entire family that year. Yeah. Even I was a mess still years later. I think it was finally senior year of high school that I started to let it go. Probably. But my mom had me read heaven is for real to help me through that yeah i cried for that one and the only reason i can tell you why i did it is because of the time right if we hadn't lost our grandma and i read it at a different time i probably wouldn't have cried right it was just the circumstances of the book that is very fair now what are the other two that made you feel some type of way both are zusak Mm. And it's Book Thief and I Am the Messenger. Okay, gotcha. I don't remember exactly what I felt for the Book Thief. I felt something. I know that. Mm -hmm. I just don't think I could put it into words. For I Am the Messenger, I remember just feeling really weird. And I still love that book. Between that book and the Book Thief, I think are his best works. I think I Am the Messenger is underrated. And that everybody should read it so much so that when I graduated high school, everybody got a copy of that book. And I did personalize it for the people I gave it to because it's the suits. It goes through the suits, right? the aces of a deck of cards. And so like if there was something in that that I correlated to a friend, I bookmarked that page and I wrote like notes and I highlighted the section for them. Like it was nice. 
Right. But I remember just feeling really weird. And that's the only way I can describe it. And I think it was just because it had me questioning everything in life. Yeah. Because it really is a book almost about self-discovery. Yeah, I do remember having a very, like, sense of profoundness after reading I Am the Messenger. Like, that's the best way that I can describe it. Pardon the noises. Piper is here with us in the recording room, and she's being very noisy. She wants my sandwich. Yes, and also Belle is eating as we're recording, so... I'm eating my dinner. Hopefully there's not a lot of food sounds coming through, but... I'm putting my mic further away when I'm eating, so hopefully you don't hear anything. If you do, I'm sorry. I just completed law school midterms. This is true. (laughs) Like, this is probably, like, the first decent... One of the first decent things I've eaten all week. This is true. So, yeah, but like I said, I am the messenger. I did have a feeling after that one. I know Book Thief, I cried for that one. I always cry towards the end of that book because it's just it's a lot i'm trying to think of other ones that like i said i feel all the time when i'm reading it's why i stick to the kind of books i stick to and it's very rare for me to divert off of that path you know a lot of secondhand embarrassment a lot of i don't know like the cute scenes when you're just like oh that's really cute there's a lot of that so for me it's kind of all the time like if I finish the book chances are good that I had some sort of some feeling in there at some point in time or another I think the difference between us is you are a very vocal reader how do you mean like if you have something with secondhand embarrassment you do your nervous freaking laugh Mm, mm -hmm. like you're very vocal while as for me unless it's something funny yeah or like something if something's really funny that makes me laugh or something throws me off guard, I'm not going to react. Yeah, I am a very reactive reader. I know I have all of the facial expressions. I talk like I laugh an awkward, nervous laugh and all of that kind of stuff. When it comes to reading, yeah, you definitely don't unless something's like super funny or you'll kind of like do this like snort gasp thing when something's very surprising because there's sometimes when you'll be reading you'll just make like this little noise and i'll just be like what the what is going on what is wrong and you're just like nothing it's reading it's something in the book yeah i think i only make those noises every once in a while or like i will mumble to myself Mm -hmm. Um, like if I feel like my brain's starting to wander off because there are some times that like my brain's like, let's think of all the other things we need to do in our life. So like I have to get my brain back on. So like I'll kind of read a bit, like mumble under my bath and read out loud. I do that for (laughs) on like tests and stuff. Like I'll be very quiet and just read something to myself and nobody knows. So it's fine. Or I just mouth it. And because I mouth it and sensitive hearing, Aria can hear my mouth. Yeah, normally there's something. There's some sort of something. You'll make some sort of noise. You'll do something. And that's kind of how it goes. And the thing is, is that with me being a reactive reader, there are sometimes, I don't want to say I do it all the time, but like I do it enough that I catch myself doing it occasionally. And it's very much an interesting time. I have to be very cautious, I think, because I feel like a lot of times like stuff will happen when I'm reading like in a public place or something. And I have to be like I'm reading in public, like in the back of my head. I have to be like I'm reading in public. I cannot react. I am reading in public. I cannot react to this book. I think another thing is and it's not to say I'm completely unfeeling because there are things that I'm like, oh, that's cute. But like I immediately just continue on. Like, I I just keep going. Arya will sit there and... Just be like, it's so cute. Suffer in her own little mind. Whereas me, I'm like, oh, that's cute. And l- unless it's something, like, completely noteworthy. Because, again, as anybody knows, I'm a sucker for romance novels that are bookish-themed. Or Pride and Prejudice retellings. Yeah. So, like, if there's something really cute that happens in those, I will, like, vocalize it to Arya or our mother. 
and I'm just like, oh, this is very cute. And I honestly just continue on. Yeah, you do that a lot. Whereas I kind of, well, no, I, like, I guess it depends on the cuteness factor. Because, like, there are some cuteness factors that it's like, oh, that's cute. And I do move on. And there are others that I'm like, that's really, really cute. And I need to, like, sit a moment with this and digest this. But also, too, that happens a lot of times with TV shows as well, like movies and TV. Like something really cute happens. Like I'm just like, ah, and like it keeps going on. But I'm like, but I need to sit with that for a minute. Or the secondhand embarrassment. Like normally that's when I'm like, I pause this and nope, I got to walk away. Oh, see, like if I ever feel secondhand embarrassment, which I do sometimes, but it's rarer because of the books I pick versus the books Aria picks. Yeah. So for me, it's like, I hurry up and continue onward. I think that also has to do with, I'm very socially awkward. Yeah. More so than Arya. So like, for me, it's like, I get that every day of my life. Yeah. So it's like, I don't want to have to live with that because I already do. So we're going to continue forward and uh, forget everything. Yeah. That's very true. Let's see here. So we talked about the sad feelings. I talked about the secondhand embarrassment. Do you remember any that had the secondhand embarrassment for you? No. Okay, cool. I'm trying to think of the ones that I found I really funny. Uh, no. Books. I kind of had the not secondhand, not completely secondhand embarrassment, but I had the, ooh, you messed up, dude. <laughs> mm, yeah. I've had that. Yeah. I'm I, trying I have to... a lot of that. Yeah, I'm trying to think of some things that I found really, really funny. Between, which I talked about that earlier this year, that was one I found really funny. Honestly, the kind of fairy tales, there was a lot of funny moments in there. And there was a really cute moment in there where it was kind of like a guy and his bodyguard are playing with the daughter of the woman that they're watching so like they're watching both this woman and the daughter they're protecting them the daughter kind of like rolls in and just kind of like owns the place essentially like she's just you know a little kid just being like this is me now like this is mine now and you're my people now and i claim you and it's super cute because they're like playing like a battle with like dolls and like it's like two very grown very scary men playing dolls with this little girl and it's just it is the cutest scene in the entire world like i was like this I have a is lot of those adorable this is so freaking adorable and i love it it was really good <gasps> oh i think i know one of the secondhand embarrassment emma hart uh -huh. i love her romance books love them they're great highly recommend if you want like a funny romantic comedy they're mm -hmm. great i find her stuff hilarious i can't remember the full name it was the one with the wrong number oh your phone neighbor your number neighbor or something yeah I think and it, it was, was her like actual that. neighbor in real life and it was a vet and she ends up like with a cat that's not her cat but it is her cat <laughs> there is some very much secondhand embarrassment on that one <laughs> and it is hilarious yeah, like I said, the only secondhand embarrassment, like there's so many, because literally it's like if you're reading like a rom-com or if you're reading just a book where a character does something awkward or says the wrong thing, like guaranteed if I've read that book, I'm feeling that embarrassment. <laughs> like literally any of the books I read that that happens, you have the answer, you know, <laughs> you know when it happens for me. I will say, though, that the one thing that is weird is, like, how people are like, oh, I have, like, this crush and, like, this is my book boyfriend and, like, you know, it's that part. I don't really get that a lot. Like, there are a lot of characters that I like. I think I'm with you. I think there are a lot of the characters that I like. And I think it all stems from their female counterpart mm -hmm. because, like... For example, like Audrey Rose. There are some parts of Audrey Rose that are very much alike with me. Yes. There are very much parts of Lily Linton that are like me. Same with Elizabeth Bennet. However, that doesn't mean one of those men that are their counterparts, like Thomas Cresswell, Ambrose, or Darcy, 
would necessarily be my perfect match. It's like I need qualities from each of them. Yeah, because like, with you. for me, love hypothesis, right? I relate a lot to Olive and I do like Dr. Carlson. However, I just, I, I don't know. Like, I think it he's all... like, he's one of the ones that's closest in half a soul. I forget the wizard guy's name, but like, he's another one that I really liked that I was just like. I, I think that's the whole thing. And like, I get some people feel it differently and they're like, this is my book boyfriend and blah, blah, blah. And like, we'll joke around with that and with each other. Like when Arya read Stalking Jack the Ripper she really liked thomas cresswell yeah and i made a joke like back off he's mine and she was just like well if he's yours i get dr carlson and i'm like okay fine like we we joke yeah but i think it really boils down to being able to relate for us at least to the female character in some aspect and then the aspect that we relate to them and and, and, and how the guy fits with that very much is like that aspect like for me that's very much my thing because i am a very complex person we all are we all are but like i am a mass of contradictions so like yeah it's really weird and also a lot of my books too it's kind of like you don't really have that book boyfriend aspect to it i don't know how to explain it maybe i'm doing reading wrong but like i think the difference is between how you do it and how i do it You do it as you can really read anything as long as it doesn't fall into certain tropes. Yeah. For me, it's I can't read anything where the female lead is a damsel in distress. Yeah. that's And that is a personality thing for me. Yeah. that's So I, I think that's what the difference is, is you can read that and you can read the independent. Like you can do both. Yeah. And you don't really go by personality for me. It's. If the character is completely opposite of me, I can't do it. I understand everybody's different, and I'm not saying in real life I can't deal with those people because I definitely can. It's more so a, I don't want to read that. Right. Like, I want to be able to put myself in the character shoes. So if there's something in of them that I can't relate to in some way, I'm like, well, I can't read this. Yeah. And, like, that's the thing. I think... We have very different lines in the sand, I think. Like, you have the hard no at, like, if there's an ounce of damsel in distress, Mm -hmm. it's an immediate no. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's a lot of times, even if it's a trope that I don't like, take miscommunication, for example. Hate that trope. If there is something that has some miscommunication in it, A lot of times I will give it the benefit of the doubt until I just can't anymore. Once you start putting in that trope, like I kind of have a threshold and you keep adding onto that, you know, onto the level until you reach the threshold. And once you reach that threshold, DNF, like it's an immediate no for me. Yeah, I think that's also just a very big personality thing. I have been very independent from day one drove our parents up a wall Mm -hmm. broke baby locks i was a terror and Mm -hmm. still am i our parents referred to me as a spitfire Mm -hmm. whereas aria was very much she can be independent but she can also play the damsel in stress so she's very more easygoing and laid back i think that's like the big thing it's the complete difference in personalities Mm mm-hmm you had trouble, you still have trouble making decisions, mm-hmm. especially big decisions. Whereas for me, I'm very, this is what's happening. I have a life plan from A to Z in case something doesn't happen. There have been times where I'm like, I have no clue what I'm going to do. But it takes like a couple months and then I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going. There was a couple months in college where I'm like, I have no clue what I'm going to do with my degree. I don't want to do anything with it. Nothing that I could do with this degree is worth it to me. Right. So, you know, it was a couple months of Bell's breakdowns over phone calls. So finally, I'm like, okay, I'll go to law school. And then it was, well, what if I don't get into law school? Then I was going to go for my master's and then go to law school. You had plans on plans. I had plans on plans and I just go. Yeah, where I have no plans, the plans are the enemy. But anyway, so yeah, I think that about sums it up, though, for 
books that made us feel something. <laughs> yeah, this is a weird episode, but it's okay. I it's, think this was hard. Yeah. Uh, especially because you have a person who feels a lot of things, i.e. Ari an empath, and then you have me, a person who struggles. <laughs> yeah. So... That's... Also, just preface, I still feel things, but I feel intense things. Yes. If do. it's mild, I, I really don't feel it. Where I feel all the things. Yeah. All the things all the time. It's very... It's exhausting. <laughs> but anyway, so we want to thank you guys for coming along today as we talked about the books that made us feel something. Of course, if you like this episode, if you like what you've been listening to, please consider following the podcast and sharing the episode with your friends. It really would help us to grow the show and we would appreciate the support those actions would give. Now, what are we going to be talking about next time? Because uh, we're doing our annual uh Poe short story that we Ah, yes, because we're getting very close to Halloween. It's going to be close to Halloween. <laughs> so, yes. So, we have a couple <laughs> stories picked out, and we will go over those next time. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see you guys then. Bye! Bye.